former emergency room doctor, screenwriter Misan Sagai won an AAACP Image Award for Belle. She made her writing debut on The Secret Laughter of Women and adapted Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. Presenting the award to Vigil Chime is Misan Sagai. Good evening. We've spoken a lot about what makes a Nichols Fellowship finalist. I think you might as well ask what makes a writer? What do we look for? There's talent and an authentic voice, and I can't deny my pride in, in having this um, Nigerian subject dealt with by a Nigerian writer. There's craft, there's practice, and there's experience. But what sets these scripts apart for me is courage, the courage of a writer. From the outset, we write as a subject to so much received wisdom. Being told what kinds of stories sell, what characters we need to make it watchable, what kind of actors will be cast in order to make the script bankable, what will sell overseas. Over and over again, we are invited to limit ourselves with this received wisdom. It takes a writer to say no. To listen to the received wisdom with respect, and yet in the end, go your own way, because this is the story you want to tell. Vigil Chime is courageous because she did just that. Born in Nigeria, her parents emigrated to the United States and she was brought up in Houston. Living in New York, she now works as a school teacher. Conventional wisdom says that all of us want to send our children here to school. After all, there are people who want to build walls to keep us out, there are so many of us. And yet, Vigil sent her son from New York back to Nigeria to school. I asked her why. She said, I wanted a place for him where a black boy is seen as a king. Her script, Bring Back Girl, also surprised me. Every time this script came to a fork in the road, it didn't just take the road less traveled, it left the road altogether and made its way across country. I honestly didn't know where it would end up, but I was never lost, never afraid, because Vigil is a great storyteller. She's always in command of her narrative always in command of her characters. Her heroine is a Chibok girl, but Vigil took the courageous decision to make her one who got away. And at first I wasn't sure about this. She's then trafficked as a child bride, and then the script becomes a rip-roaring action story of a father looking for his daughter. But at last, I understand the importance of the courage and the authentic voice. Because in telling the story of the girl that got away, she ends up telling us everything about the girls that are still missing. They have no greater advocate. An African writer, a beautiful script, a courageous writer, my countryman. Vigil Chime.
Good evening. Do I sound calm? <laughs> I'm not at all. <laughs> to make matters worse, I'm standing not next to one celebrity, but four. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, I'm going to try not to embarrass myself or my country. Um, I begin my thanks to Miss Sagay herself. Indeed, it is the greatest thrill as a Nigerian to be introduced by another Nigerian, British though she may be. <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> uh, thank you so much for all those beautiful things you said about me. I mean, I didn't recognize myself at all, but I would try and see myself through your eyes. <laughs> uh, a little story about uh, my involvement with the nickel. In 2008, I had written what I thought was a masterpiece. Uh, it had power, it had courage, it had all those things. I thought anybody would read it and see the meaning of life in what I was trying to do. Uh, they didn't agree at all. It didn't even, <laughs> it didn't even get to uh, quarterfinals. Uh, the rejection was so painful that I swore, that's it, I'm done with the nickel. I'm never going to talk to them ever again. It was like a, a bad breakup. You know, if you break up with a guy, you swear off guys for all eternity. <laughs> I moved on with my life. And um, uh, I mean, that was 2008. So fast forward to 2017, uh, Bring Back Girl is ready. You know, and I, it was a very simple story compared to the one I wrote in 2008. Uh, it was simple because I was going to go off to Africa immediately and shoot her. But uh, I got into a small snag. I wasn't able to raise the funds uh, to actually begin or even complete the story. In frustration, I went knocking on an old boyfriend's door, the nickel. <laughs> uh, I said, well, here I am back again. I know I swore, but I can't just leave her sitting there. Uh, so I turned it in and promptly forgot that I did that. And I, I just, uh, I mean, why not? I mean, uh, you've built a, a very tough skin of rejection. There's, they can do nothing to me at this point. So uh, imagine, imagine my shock and awe when uh, I started getting the notification. This script is really good, they said. Quarterfinals. I said, really? Okay. By semifinal. Seriously? I actually went back and read the script to be sure, <laughs> what are they talking about? <laughs> I was like, really? This one? Um, and then lo and behold, you know, I could not have anticipated that we would be here tonight. I could not have anticipated <laughs> that uh, I would win. I could not have anticipated all that winning would bring. I mean, I have people calling me, speaking to me as if I have a writing career. Uh, and nor could I have foreseen <laughs> that uh, my words, those words are being spoken by Mr. Vaughn, by Ms. Mbatha Raw, by Mr. Santoro, and by Ms. Deutsche. Had I known that my words would come out of your mouths, literally, I would have agonized more over the dialogue. I would have <laughs> struggled to make them more profound and eloquent. But as to that, there was no need. You guys read so beautifully. I mean, I, I was transported out of this vast room <laughs> uh, to the AMC Theater in Harlem, where I watch my movies. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy lives to uh, honor us with your craft. Um, now, uh, I want to give a gratitude to my family. Uh, there are three in the audience. Uh, my brother, Ken, who bought a, a new outfit for this evening. <laughs> I call this guy all the time. For, what do you think would happen here? What do you No, don't do that. Do not do that. So he's my story guru. Uh, my son here, 16-year-old Jidobi, he is my true uh, work in progress. Uh, <laughs> When he learned that mom won, he's like, I knew you, this is your year, you've been writing since I was born, which is true. But he later, I figured out why he was saying that. He asked me, so, how much of the prize do I get? <laughs> uh, you forget that your entire room and board for life you owe me, bro. <laughs> uh, my, my auntie is here from Connecticut. Um, she, let me tell you what this woman did. Upon learning that I, I had won, she took it upon herself to call family. She said, our vigil has won a very important award. <laughs> and they said, eh, what kind of award? She said, it's so important. It's like she won the Oscar. Ah, the person screamed and called somebody else, substituted the word like the Oscar for. Our vigil has been nominated for an Oscar. That person screamed even louder, eh? 
picked up the phone and called a third person and now said, our vigil has won the Oscar in screenwriting all over the world and in the village. All the chimes roared, even those I'm not related to. <laughs> and this is the essence of family. And now I have street cred, you know, because of this award. So I am so thrilled. In the audience, I want to say I have some supporters. These are women screenwriters over 40. Yes. I know. I don't look it. But I am actually a woman screenwriter over 40. I met these ladies at the Writers Lab uh, retreat uh, not too long ago. Uh, ladies, you're in the house, please let's make some noise. This is our moment. So I win this award, not just for me, but for all of us, but I will keep the money, thank you. <laughs> and finally, finally, uh, the greatest thanks I reserve to the Academy. I mean, I, I have to, I can't leave the stage without saying thank you to the Academy, to Don and G. Nickel, who saw the need and the vision to create this fellowship in 1986-85 to the army of readers who were able to indeed whittle 7,000 entries into 10, to the committee that did have a spirited, from what I hear, discussion <laughs> to choose from that 10 to five. Um, they put this entire week together and this evening, and that's not all. Consider that they paid for my flight from New York to here. Consider that they put me in a plush hotel on Beverly Hills. <laughs> Consider that they gave me a stipend to cover the expenses for this week, and this is not to mention the prize itself. Through it all, the team has been exceptional in their support. I mean, they're asking me, is it vigil or vigil? Is it chime or chime? Is it bubaka or bubaka? I mean, who does this? Who does this? People who want to make sure that this evening goes well. You are the greatest uh, champion and committee of writers anywhere. And in short, tonight, this entire experience has made me feel truly as if I did win the Oscar. So thank you, thank you, thank you.